kind of thing that I would touch on is the last 15 years, what I've noticed, is, to your point, is that now everything is this future mindset of, is it going to be collectible? What's the market right, going to be? Is right. it going to be flippable? Am I going to make two times X? Because 15 years ago, you just bought the watch because you liked it. One of the things that I notice in this industry is today the world is so different than it was when I started doing this and even 20, 10 years ago, yeah. five years ago, for God's sakes. Five years ago, for sure. 20 years ago, it was, you know, Rolex and Paddock, and then people would discover a new brand. Yep. You know, Jorn became a new brand, Longa became a new brand, and people would seek it out and look for it. And I feel like the part that frustrates me is I feel like the internet kind of killed the fun of it because everybody wants the same four watches. Yeah. And if it's not cool to have, and if it's not, somebody that I'm going to say, oh, I got it and you don't, then people don't discover a new brand and really buy for themselves. They're ending up buying for their friends and for Instagram. Now you got all these, you know, Instagram, all you got all these people doing wrist rolls and Coke shots and all this stuff. And they think, you know, is this specific year Mark One dial 20 years now going to be collectible? And really, it should just be because you like the watch and you want to wear it. I mean... No, That's I, my... I absolutely agree. Whatever happened to thrill the chase or buying something that you actually like and appreciate, you'd like to look at the aesthetics. Well, the part of it is also like we used to pick up the watches every day and literally I used to open my draw and decide what watch I wanted to wear because I loved them all, but I'd pick up and wear the watch. Now I feel like people are going online and checking to see what it's worth today. That's like the first <laughs> thing they do. Yeah. Instead right. of seeing yeah. like, right. you know, like I saw a shot on Instagram literally an hour ago saying, you know, the 5711 1A white, you know, 10 days ago was worth 50 and now it's worth 80. Right. Because they discontinued it. Right. It's well, like, but every, do you really every like Every single it? listing online went to 99 or 54. 100 plus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It'll probably get there. And it's just like that. I don't, don't think it'll but get But you know there. what the thing about that, though? Uh, one or two will sell there. Yes, but Until again, somebody one realizes one that, that they made a exactly. massive mistake yeah. with these, so, that kind of change on that watch. But and, and the other things, I mean, there's been tons of changes, like, brand-wise. So when I, when I first got started, it was 2001. And it felt like at 2001, I, was, I didn't know what was going on before 2001, so you'll know better than I will. <laughs> but when it happened, it seemed like the, the arms race... For like who was doing the most outrageous watches started right. in like 2001. Right. You had watch companies like at least Norton came out with the Freak, and then everybody was like, the "What freaks the freaks were that? huge. It was crazy. Genghis like, Khan. Genghis I used to Khan, love that was, stuff. They were doing all kinds Narden of crazy did stuff. Amazing stuff. They were doing amazing the stuff, right? So, and, and then it was Renee and Pepe with Audemars doing all the crazy yeah. stuff. And you had all like everybody was just like, stuff. who can out create somebody else? And you had all these like the Hublot became a big thing. Panerai was doing crazy watches, but well, they, but no, Panerai ruined it. Is what happened. <laughs> Panerai absolutely ruined the watch market because literally, I remember we were one of the first twelve Panerai dealers in the country. They, the original collection was thirty-six pieces. It was twelve models. You had to buy three of each, and in the first month, I remember they sold like seventeen of them. Twelve of them came back in January because they were too big. And then two years later, all they were was bigger and bigger and bigger. Everything and then everybody huge. had to try to catch up. Everybody and decide size was the thing, and, and it, was, it was a disaster. And who were the so brands? So did they that ruin didn't it, or did they they set modern standards? That's the thing. They changed I, the standard. I don't for think sure. Panerai ruined the watch market. I think Panerai out Hublot Hublot. I think Panerai. Well, Panerai was way ahead of Hublot. Though. Yeah, they, exactly. But they not only did they set the precedent for what was a cool men's Arnold Schwarzenegger sports watch, <laughs> but you were running around playing uh, Commando wearing a watch, and they still. I mean, today, I mean, they make a lot of watches and they go up and down, what you call it. But they trade well. People they trade well. Into, they trade all the still time. A core guys but now they went smaller. Better. I mean, they yeah. came up yeah. with newer watches that are 32 well, and 42s, which is awesome. That's true. A year and a half, two years ago, but Correct. now if you look, all the new titanium pieces, the Mike Horns, all they're all 47 millimeters. I know. So they're not shy about it. They don't. They're, you know, they don't hold punches. And I, I think, think that's okay uh, for some brands, but you know, the brands that survived the let's let's make everything big with Rolex and Paddock, like they survived that phase. Well, Rolex was, like, was very resistant. Rolex has got a 42 big millimeter ass. white gold yacht master now. They, they do, do. Yeah. but it's again that wears small when you wear that. It's watch. a great watch. It's a great watch, but it wears small. And it's what like two percent of the line is above Correct. 40, so it doesn't. Correct. It's not like they didn't cannibalize and and eat up the rest of their production just no. to make big watches like everybody else did. 
Yeah. From 2000 to 2006. Dog coming to work? Yeah. But Paddock was Sorry. doing the exact opposite. Well, the they were doing the exact opposite. They had in you know in the two th early 2000s they had 33 millimeter dress watches, and then other brands were like, maybe 33 is a little too small. So. Roger Dubuis said, let's take classic watches uh, and make them 37 and, 30, and 40 watches, or 40 millimeter cases, and just modernize and make it look right for, the, and there's, they're timeless. Like if you took a 2001, name your model, Roger Dubuis, or 99 Roger Dubuis. Sympathies. And you, sympathies, the, and you put it next to a to a paddock or a Vacheron at the time, like the Roger Dubuis are way. A little bit on I mean, the that's kind of what Well, that's what Longa about. did too. Wait, when they were right. Longa, we used to sell Longa next to paddock, and it was always, you know, the Longa was a little bigger. It, was Germanic, it was bulkier, it wore better for the times. And, you know, honestly, arguably the movements were more, more interesting yeah. back in the day. I mean, most of the paddocks were closed up, Longa did all these, the chronograph. Again, one of my all time favorite watches ever made, the Datagraph, still today. You know, by today's and standard, it's King small. of the chronograph. But, it's per this, but see, this is perfect though. It's 39 king millimeters. Of the chronograph. It's the king, it's the best. It is and, absolutely the best. It is one of the only watches in the world that's prettier to look at upside it's down. It's the ultimate one. I mean, I had this conversation, I was telling you guys earlier, in Dubai with Philippe Dufour. You know, the guy owns two other watches and the datagraph is the one of them. And, and he still says it's the best chronograph made and no one in Switzerland's touched it. Since. And if you can get a hold of the black dial, get the black dial. But the black dial is the one he wears. They're all yeah. cool. To your run. No, but the rose black is definitely the Just best. Just get a data. Just get a data. It doesn't matter what you should. Yeah, Everybody should get them all. Get a data. Don't, don't. The new up down's down. nice, yeah. but it's not it's nearly not, as, not nice. as nice as this. I agree. I like the up down. I think it's the power reserves are cool. The up down is good. It's traditional. Yes, traditional German. I love that. The size was always a little off to me, though. Yeah. Like the balance of the thickness. But I think it's smart that it was something that differentiated. The size was differentiated by the up down. Right. And it kind of opens someone that maybe can't wear that watch. He's used to wearing a Panerai. Can now look for an up down. Right. That's get into something that's yeah. a little bit bigger. Jay, I have to yeah. say, are you, are you using yourself as an example here? Man, just, uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, Dato is definitely like, on the future yeah. hit list. Oh, I know it no, is. I hear, I hear you just literally I will say in though, conversation for by just, talking with Mike. Just for uh, to kind of anchor the conversation, Mike is all things Longa. I am all things Longa. I love Longa. So, Everybody's yeah. guilty as charged. I, I like. I, I knew it. about the watch. I liked it. It was cool. But I always like Longa. Yeah, it's a little sterile, whatever. Mike comes in, look at the movement, look at the look at this, look at that. And all the fit and, and finish sudden, I love. And all of a sudden, you're bad mouthing other brands. Yeah. You're, you're pushing yeah. data graphs. You're like, look. I love it. Chronograph did you know that this dial only exists in this metal on this? You know, exactly. And then so this, 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 like, this is, but just in context, like this is under forty thousand dollars. Correct. Right. Oh, today and value wise, and that's it perfect is an segue. Sir, because value. like, okay, so absurd. you can have that or you can have this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I am. I, I will be guilty as charged. I've never been an Aquanaut guy. I never liked them. I brought this one out just for fun. Like, someone has to explain to me why this quartz Aquanaut that's not the most attractive watch I've ever seen is 16 grand today. Uh, you know, and it's well, just like heading all rising tide lifts all boats in steel sport watches, but it's. It's a steel yeah. sport yeah. model. It's small. It's, not it's nothing. Aquanaut yeah. Not, at least this has not, a reason to live. No. Even though I'm not, again, I'm not an Aquanaut guy, but I mean, if I could have this or this, I don't That's, get so that. There's no yeah, question. It's, it's there's where's, no the question. where's the substance? Where's the bang for the book? It's kind of what we talked about. When we pulled this piece we were talking about earlier, which is the- That uh, was an awesome piece. It's really, really piece. cool retrograde date. And then like a jump hour with a- uh, so here's a perfect segue from 20 years ago. I mean, these were super rare, complicated, unusual pieces. The problem they have is they say Vacheron on them. I think that's Today cool, in the internet world, yeah. Vacheron, this if this said Jorn, if that said Jorn on it, that's a hundred thousand dollar watch. Right. So Just because it's unusual, it's a jump hour, it's cool. It's a jump hour, hand done dial, really Amazing cool. watch. A beautiful Obscure. movement, hand decorated. We'll probably have it in another few months because nobody pays any attention. Which is a shame because it's less for the book, we could possibly move it by virtue of this segment. So. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe. Somebody we'll, call up and say Which will happen. Some, so somebody, yeah. What's cost? I, I don't know. I'm but here's like, the thing. <laughs> and, and somebody will see that. What do you think? You gotta, it's awesome. But here's but the I also like so, shaped watches. No, I like shaped. This is, yeah. I mean, okay, there you go. I'm telling. So, uh, here's so that's the going home, Jaden. You have to. Good. This is the kind of watch. And frankly, no, I like, like I mean, let, let's if we're if we're being super honest, like sometimes I feel like we don't have an outlet for this this kind of watch, right? This is a watch that you got to get the guy in front of and be like, look. It's a face-to-face -face watch, and that's one yeah. of the interesting things. But also, from face -face. 20 years ago, yeah. like yeah. we sit here in this environment right. in an office on the phones on with pictures and digital stuff selling watches. 
I just went back to retail for six months. I did it in Dubai for three weeks. I loved and it. It, it, it was I awesome liked fun. it a lot more. And it was, yeah. I, you know, it was Selling taking grenades and, 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 and did it for a while. And it was, it was nice to get back in front of certain like watch collectors and go bring in a watch and sit down and go, look at this, this is cool. This is cool. This is a neat watch. People go, yeah, that is neat. Doesn't look as good in the right, pictures. But you're never going to pull it off a website. You can't pull right. it off the website. You right. just skim right there through. There are it limits past. to the digital. There are, yeah, there are certain there pieces are limits that to need digital. to be romanticized right. and, and sold. Um, you and know, if, and if the you dado is one of those pieces, even though it's a bigger piece than yeah. what we're talking about here, the dado is one of those pieces where I can say, yeah, if, unless you turn it over and look at the movement, you'll never know. But when right. you're in person, Correct. You can. I can walk you through that, oh and I can God. sell you that watch. It's almost like uh, it's almost like the crystal is magnified in the back. That's yeah. how clear it is, and it just it, you just zoom all the way in. Um, but that's what's you know same thing with this uh, this really really piece white gold uh, retrograde date. You know, it's so stunning, and when you start playing with it, you see all the little intricacies that it's obscure. Make it, special. it feels old world. But, you, you don't find that. I mean, I I would argue that that's hands down like better than a show part L U C. Yeah, oh, for the money. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and yeah. same money. And I like LUCs. Oh, you see, the LUCs are, are awesome. arguably the only thing worth talking about right now <laughs> from show part. But well, there's no question about that. But I, even then, it's a stretch for me. But I'm well, not well, a sure guy. When, when but I'm also say, wearing a lumen. I mean, you want to talk longer? Come on, look at this thing. And that's where it's look at. Look at that thing. And right that's up. where it's at. I mean, you know, I mean, it's like how cool is that? Nobody would do stuff like this, though. That's the cool stuff, and that's what I like about the stuff today even more so. We, we do get interesting things, yeah. but it's like, sometimes I get sad when, I'm, you know, this sits. Yep. I mean, it's a paddock perpetual calendar. But 20 years ago, that was the ultimate, that was, that was kind of the thing, like you would sell 3919s, you'd sell, get the guy into an annual. The ultimate thing was, you know, okay. perpetual I am, calendar. I am seeing and with some of my bigger collectors, like this substance play is starting to move. Because when all the, when this gets, when these right, it's the same price. Right. When these skyrocket, and it's like, well, what am I doing? What, what do I do? Do I reality sets in? Yeah, and you start getting something like this, and it's exactly right. reality sets in. It's yeah, like yeah. when I spent seventy thousand dollars on the steel three hand paddock, uh, and, and I could have had a thirty nine seventy. First of all, <laughs> let's take a step back and call it first world problem. No matter what we're talking about, <laughs> we're all trying to argue about how much money we should spend on a wrist. I don't watch. have the money in my pocket. I'll say that if I did, if I'm going to be going out there and buying a steel piece that costs that much money, I'm not. You better believe that I'm going to be going into a complication or a grand complication. The only issue I have with it is that you'll watch. Like, it's not just that; it's that it's being produced right. today. It can bend up. You know, next week they could send 50 of them out, and it changes the market. Mm -hmm. Well, you also so have when we're talking about collectability side. I would you know, like if it was a you know a double red sea dweller yeah. crazy maybe. I spend fifty grand on a steel watch, but but you'd be surprised. Well, I mean, so there's there's a little bit, but yeah. all different avenues for steel sport model sales. Some people it's because the watch is hot. Some people it's because they have fifteen of these and they want something well, they can beat the problem, hell out of. But right. I think most of the problem is that people are buying it because, like, right. I know the guys who were asking me about Nautiluses five years ago. I would have a Nautilus in the case, and they wouldn't care. But so what we were talking about yesterday on a different conversation is like the difference between like Jorn and RM. And the fact that RM, like eighty percent of what exists, is held by dealers. Right. Correct. Whereas Jorn, like eighty plus percent, no. is held by collectors. The thing I love about Jorn, and we brought out probably one of the all-time favorites when I started, you know, brass movements. And the funny thing, we had this conversation the other day was um, when the brass, when the gold movements came out, nobody wanted the brass movements because it's, it's like, look at it, look who at made it a gold right. movement right. watch? It was it's awesome. Hot. It was, it was like, a new hot thing. You keep losing that thing. Right. Like, why would I get? The why last would I get the last model? year's model? And now. There's so now few. Now look of them. at you. Dummy. Look at you. It's amazing. Look at the ox. But that's an awesome. But Bruce the other thing I love about Jorn, and I find the same thing with Longa guys and Jorn guys, they love their watches. Yep. Like you meet a Jorn guy who's got two or three of them, and he'll talk to you about his watch all day long. That's what he wants to do. And there's about. that's what I missed from 20 years ago. I felt like we had more of those guys and less of the guys flipping and speculating. Yeah.